Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. So I watched the entire hour and 50 minute live stream from Relic today so that you don't have to. Uh, so really quickly here, I'm going to go through the notes. One thing up front, if you're looking for multiplayer balance information, they didn't touch it. They're going to get it uh, after the multiplayer stuff on Tuesday, the 16th of July, as they launch the patch. Uh, I think they typically do that to avoid uh, confusion. People go into the game expecting some of the multiplayer balance to hit when the patch hasn't come out yet. But either way, separate discussion on the TTK stuff and the balance changes in general. Um, okay, across the board, this patch seems really focused on quality of life improvements and general immersion. So one of the things they mentioned early on is they've added a bunch of assets to the game and incorporated them into some of the maps to help improve things like pathfinding, because like the biggest example is Villa Fiore, there are stone walls that mess with light vehicle pathing. They replace them with like wrought iron fences that fit the map, but then also allow for better gameplay. So uh, th I think that's generally kind of a good sign. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, it looks like most of the maps have received at least some touch up one way or another. Uh, they said there's still some maps that they'd like to have some work to do. They are really aware of the maps that people don't like, basically based on the map selection and the veto system. Um, there are a couple that I just have vetoed constantly and it's not gonna change even if they uh, make major changes, but uh, that's just me. Um, new 4v4 map is coming called Black Gold. Uh, it's essentially designed to be a very open, like desert driven map with a couple of uh, points of interest. But the idea is uh, similar to Winter Line, but with even less uh, like path blockers or lanes. Just one big sweeping open uh, area for some fights because they really want to emphasize the mechanized aspect of play having infantry units ride tanks towing team weapons the balance between having forward defenses and then you know risking getting overrun so i think that could be cool 4v4 is uh is a game mode i play when i'm, I'm being a little more casual so i'm excited to see kind of the new map there and what that brings uh of note they've made some updates to the skirmish map pool as well to support the italian campaign so there's a little bit more variety um, and then they made some general atmosphere and lighting changes to multiple maps that you may or may not notice. Some of this stuff was pretty cool looking, like on Twin Beaches. Some of it on some of the other maps wasn't as obvious to me. Um, for single player stuff, uh, they've made some AI updates. So in theory, it should scale a little bit better so newer players will have an easier time uh, with the campaign at the easy difficulty levels. But then it should make the AI a little bit more responsive and intelligent about how they use their units, I'm sure. Uh, you know, a lot of experienced players with the genre really don't have a problem getting uh, AI squad wipes and, and vehicles destroyed. So hopefully the AI changes make that a little bit more realistic. Um, in line with some of the uh, immersion stuff, the first thing they added was increased camera shake. Of note, they removed the like Z-axis camera shake, so it, it shouldn't be as jarring, but again, should add to the immersion a little bit. Big explosions, big vehicles rolling around the map should add some like camera shake to the frame. We'll see how that goes. I know sometimes it, it can frustrate people. Maybe it messes with your ability to uh, select units or whatever, but um, it looks like they're doing this in the name of immersion and honestly feedback to the players in terms of like whether or not a, a vehicle shot or an armor, uh, armor round pierces or penetrates versus bouncing, etc. They've also added suspension effects to some of the vehicles, again, in the, in the name of improving immersion. Um, they've worked to make towing a little bit more responsive. Um, They've, uh, they've changed kind of the, the campaign. So you'll see uh, throughout these notes, there are a lot of uh, UI kind of updates to improve aware awareness. Um, and a lot of it's focused on the campaign, but some of it is focused on multiplayer. Um, and then they've updated kind of the way they treat airplanes and recon in the campaign to create a little bit more of a focus on that. So you can't just like wander around with your units and expect to not get punished by the AI for it. Um, one thing that they, they showed briefly, they made some significant updates to the way the fog of war is cleared. So now it looks a lot smoother. Um, it moves, it has provides more consistent view cones, like around corners, around buildings and, and through archways and stuff like that. Um, so you won't have units just disappear and then reappear constantly, uh, as long as you have a clear line of sight to it. So that actually looks really good. I really like that. Uh, for multiplayer, they did add random faction selection. It's going to use your most recent battle group loadout. Um, so the goal here is it improves your matchmaking times and then the matchmaking fidelity. So if you're like 1200 with one faction and 1600 with another one, you can choose random and depending on who else is available, it'll 
find you a match that's a little bit closer to your existing elo which i really like sometimes i just don't want to choose right i just want to line up and say like yeah i'll play whatever i don't care just find me a match um i know some people main one or two factions but i think one of the best ways to learn uh is to play other factions and be forced to try to figure out kind of how they uh how they operate how they execute um another thing your player profile will include match history so the last 10 games be visible to anyone who looks at your player profile so that's pretty cool looks like they're trying to adopt some of the the features of like co3stats.org um but cool they like more interaction within the game itself i like it um they've added a couple new camera control settings so i look at this as an opportunity to make even more of the people that watch my cast sick to their stomach by rotating the camera to wonky angles um so joking a little bit but i think it'll allow uh some additional options so if you want the camera to center if you want the camera to follow a unit if you want the camera to follow a unit when you use the or leave the tack map um and then options to have the camera bounce with uh group sub selection um which i think is pretty cool actually like if you want to do that so if you if you're not tracking if you've got multiple squads within a control group let's say it's control group one, you hit one, and then as you, that selects the whole group, and then you can hit tab and cycle through individual units. So now you can have a setting where it'll actually rotate the focus to each squad as you cycle through that group. That could be really helpful if you've like got all your AT in one control group, but you want to pick one squad that's closer to the target or something like that. Um, so that'll help with the camera control and reduce the amount of edge of screen panning you got to do. Um, They've made an update to the presence system. So when you return uh, from a game, if one of your your buddies that you just won the game with uh, goes off to get something to drink and doesn't like exit map spectator or match stats, um, you can still queue up the next game without waiting for him. Um, <clears throat> they've in improved AFK detection. So it sounds like there's basically going to be a two minute grace period. Uh, and so if you're AFK for one minute, they'll give you a warning for uh, the second minute, then they'll kick you. Um, and you have to actually execute meaningful actions. So you can't just have some script to pan your camera around. You have to actually do things that resemble in-game actions to avoid being kicked. Um, some additional UI updates. So now there are all the icons that, that basically indicate like buffs or debuffs or effects on units. Those now with a hover tooltip should actually indicate the exact buff or debuff or the effect that's being had. Um, I think this is super helpful, especially after they uh, implemented these the first time. A lot of times I look at a unit and I'd be like, what, what is influencing that? Like, what is the actual effect? Now you should be able to hover over even your opponent's units and see what buffs and debuffs uh, are active. So super helpful in helping you just better understand the game and what is, what is happening. Um, I'm a big fan of all that stuff to improve transparency. Like this game is complicated enough. We don't need to make it more complicated by hiding all of the actual mechanisms behind, you know, a broken UI. Um, they've also changed some unit and battle group icons. So the most famous one, the whiz bang has been removed from the armored, armored battle group, uh, kind of art there because the whiz bang is not available for the armored battle group. I think it should be, I want a whiz bang in every U S battle group because why not rocket artillery is awesome. Um, you'll also see the battle group icons themselves have been updated. It should just be a little bit more intuitive and look a little bit more like premium. Uh, was their their primary talking point but it'll help you figure out kind of how you're building out the battle group and what stuff still what stuff you have chosen and what stuff's still available to you uh, a couple last things had to do with the demo charge and mines so the demo charge has now been standardized across all the factions um, and when you plant one there will be a ui to show you the effect range of the demo charge uh, now any unit can detect a demo charge just based on their range like their proximity to the charge a minesweeper can detect and actually disable the demo charge. Uh, what's interesting is smoke prevents detection by non minesweeper units. So if you've got a squad moving up on a demo charge, you plant it on a VP, you can smoke it with a mortar, the squad moves in and then you hit it and you get that really, really sexy wipe that you were going for. And then finally, they said they've improved the visualization of mine detection and mine sweeping in general. Currently, even mines that you know uh, that you can see sometimes blend into the terrain. Um, so they've made it so when you sweep a mine and identify it, it's easier to see and then you'll get a clear like XP kicker uh, style effect when you actually uh, sweep or disable a mine so you can track it. All right, that's it. That's the update. Multiplayer balance stuff coming on Tuesday. The full update coming on Tuesday. Remember, it's the Onyx Shark update. Uh, so super pumped to see it. 
Um, in general, I'm really happy with this, right? All the effort they're putting into quality of life, into the art, into the immersion, that tells me that Relic is here to stay and focus on this game and they really care about the feedback and they care about making the game better, which is always a good sign. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you're hoping for uh, in the multiplayer balance update that comes on Tuesday. Uh, and with that, we'll close this one out and I'll see y'all in the next one.